Hello friends and welcome back to Self-Critical Automaton Plays Dark Souls. And today we're actually exploring the inside of Anul Londo. Um, I think I talked to Soler last week, or last you yesterday really actually. Chatting with me, aren't you? If I didn't know better, I'd think you have feelings for me. Oh, dear me, pretend you didn't hear that. <laughs> oh, Soler, if only you were a woman. Anyway. I kind of think this is probably the servants' quarters. I mean, it seems that way. Uh, but also, all of these rooms are sized to uh, humans rather than to giants, and they are in fact um, too small for even the Silver Knight scale people. Uh, yeah, so this place is full of Silver Knights and treasure chests. Interesting pairing, if ever there was one. I'm uh. A little bit sleepy, so I hope that's not going to be problems. But I'm sure I'll be fine. So yeah, and all on though. This is this is really interesting because this is the only inhabited section that we see, or rather, the only section that was, you know clearly inhabited at one point, although it's no longer inhabited by anyone other than these uh, Silver Knights. Um, are you... Nope, you are a perfectly safe chest. Sunlight medals. So, yeah. This is... I don't really have that much to say yet. As I said, I am very tired. It's um, been a tiring week. In fact, this episode is going up being recorded and going up one day late because of how tired I am. Life is just really difficult, turns out, you know? Especially when you uh, fail to get your backstabs off. Come on. Come on. There we go. Damn it. <laughs> now, I turn myself human because there's usually a lot of people's uh, summon signs dotted around here. That does not seem to be the case today, which is uh, unfortunate. I don't know if just not many people are playing uh, Dark Souls 1 lately or what, but there do seem to be very few uh, very few summon signs around. I mean, I've also not been invaded, but then that's probably due to the fact that, as I mentioned before, I joined the... Uh, the... Sun... no, not the Sunlight Warriors. I joined... I joined a Covenant, one which... Uh, makes it easier to ally with other players and harder for players to invade you. Of course, the question of how much effect that's actually having, if I'm not actually finding anyone, is, you know, anyone's guess. Does not open from this side? What about you? Ah, this is an interesting room, isn't it? Lots of... yeah, these, these are just, you know, full of scrolls and stuff. It's kind of a mystery what they might say, but uh, somewhere here is... A secret door. Gotta love those secret doors, huh? You can tell that this is the clue that that secret door is there is that there's this window into a room here, and you can whoops, that was close. You can so you can tell that there is, uh, you know, there's a room with no doors. Um, it's very dark down here. I think there's a mimic, and there's also a couple of treasure chests, which contain uh, ah, this one's a mimic. You can tell because the chain goes forwards instead of backwards. Let's see if we can uh, uh, give it a bit of a surprise. Looks like I... Are these guys... I think they're weak against... Uh, I think they're weak to lightning, maybe. Uh, or possibly holy. But not to fire, sadly. Unlike the Silver Knights who are weak to fire. Uh, yeah. Much later on we're going to get an item that will explain a little bit of the history of these guys, but for now they're just weird monsters. The Occult Club. Probably something very useful, that. Doing bonus damage to divine enemies. Which I believe are just the Silver Knights and a couple of bosses. And the Black Knights as well, of course. Uh, these both are fine as well. So yeah, we're finding Havel's gear in these chests. Havel was once 
it's unclear as to whether Havel was a human, but I think he was. Um, Havel was once a bishop in the uh, the Way of White, which is, of course, the primary... There doesn't seem to have been a direct, like a, a, like a singular sect just worshipping Gwyn. It seems that the sects were primarily devoted to beings adjacent to Gwyn, Gwyn such as um, healers worshipping uh, worshipping Guinevere, his daughter, warriors worshipping the unnamed sun deity, uh, S-O-N, not S-U-N, and um, the Way of White being the biggest, most widely propagated uh, religion relating to Gwyn's, uh, Gwyn's get, is, of course, associated with Allfather Lloyd, who is Gwyn's father. Um, or, no, actually, Allfather Lloyd is Gwyn's uncle, which is interesting because of the implication- OH, DICKS! I survived, oh my god. Uh, I hate these things, I really do. I didn't think it would catch me, but, um, yeah, so, Allfather Lloyd is Gwyn's uncle, which is interesting because that implies not just that Gwyn had a father, but brothers as well, who are, of course, unmentioned in the mythologies, which reinforces my belief that, um, you know, there was a first people. There was, in terms of the history of the world, there were a singular people who came into existence, of whom four individuals um, became deities, one of whom um, spread his deific status to his his family, and that's where that's where Gwyn's Gwyn's lot come from. Um, there's quite a few uh, quite a few mimics around here. I think this might be the last one, but you know, still technically quite a few since three years a few. And yeah, it's interesting, really. If you recall the original cutscene. There were four individuals of that first people who took the souls of lords from the first flame, gained divinity. Also, wow, that was a good dodge, right? <laughs> um, Gwyn being one of them, uh, the Witch of Isolith being another, Nito, the first of the dead, being a third, and a fourth being our old pal. The Furtive Pygmy. Now, the Furtive Pygmy is referred to as being easily forgotten. This is very interesting because a lot of people assume that the oppositional states of these deities are the Witch of Isolith um, positioned against Gwyn and uh, Nito as a neutral force. Because, of course, people forget about the Furtive Pygmy. But if you think about it, um, all of everything in this game is is split into into different halves of. Uh, I think there's a yeah, there's a one of them down there. <laughs> oh, well, oh, Silver Knight. Hello. Um. So, and people think that you know, Gwyn's knights are weak to fire. Perhaps fire was the opposite oppositional force to Gwyn, but it's not. Fire is the only neutral force in this cosmology, because you have um, you have light and dark, life and death, all of these things. But fire itself simply symbolizes the existence of dualities. It contains every duality within itself. It you know it lives and dies. It casts it sheds light, but also casts shadows. Um, it grows and feeds and wanes and fades away. It has a beginning and an end. Fire is the only singular force because it represents all forces, and it represents all of the dualities that this world is built out of. Um, thus, the idea of the furtive pygmy just kind of not being part of that... Uh, of it not being two pairs, but of one trio, with Nito being neutral and the other two being uh, oppositional, 
So, if you think about it, the natural shape of the world, therefore, is that these four beings took souls from the fire and became great divinities. And it seems like they were supposed to be set up, as I was saying, in an oppositional manner. You would have... See that? There was someone on the other side of that wall. Haha! <laughs> um, this is just a balcony. But it's a really lovely view, so it's worth uh, uh, taking a look. As you can see, Anor Londo is massive. Entire city of cathedrals. And completely abandoned. The home of the gods, and yet there's none of them here. Um, do both of these doors open? I can never remember. I think just this one. Which has a silver knight in here somewhere. Or not. That door definitely has one behind it, though. Yeah, so this is a human-sized bed. Human-sized room, human-sized furniture. Interesting paintings. Um, this is a painting of the goddess Guinevere, who we're going to meet later. The aforementioned first daughter of Gwen. Unclear who this guy is. Um, like, it's interesting because some of the paintings clearly refer to specific divine figures, whereas a lot of these paintings just seem to be like generic, vaguely um, Renaissance portraiture. Um, which is also interesting because the world generally has the tone of a medieval world rather than, you know, 16th, 1700s style art like this. Um, I never really did learn my art history, otherwise I'd be able to speak with more, more confidence on that matter. Um, I'm sure my formerly an art teacher mother is, is, well, let's just say I'm glad she's not here. Uh, here's that little aforementioned silver knight. So, what was I saying? Ah, oppositional forces. So, ow! Damn it. So, if you've got, um, yeah, so basically people assume that it's light and fire that oppo oppose one another, but that's not the case. Light, as I, as I have said, is not opposite to fire because fire is not opposite to anything. Fire is everything together. Fire is all aspects. So, who is then? I think it's the furtive pygmy. But, the thing is, way back when divinity first came into the world with the flame and people took their divinity from it, um, the four powers that they took were not life, death, were not um, light, dark, fire, and death. People associate fire with the Witch of Isolith because of pyromancy being her art, but that's because before she became a divinity, she was a flame sorcerer. That's something, that's a power she had as a mortal. And thus, uh, and of course the association with the Flames of Chaos, but that doesn't come from her divinity, that comes from her, um, ouch. That comes from her folly, her hubris in attempting to recreate the first flame. Can we hit each other from here? Ha! I can hit him, but he can't hit me. Fantastic. So... Oh, that was foolish. Oh, I can hit him. Good. Um, yeah. So, you have the four powers are in fact life and death, light and dark. Which means that the Witch of Isolith is opposed to Nito. And Gwyn is opposed to the Furtive Pygmy. But the Furtive Pygmy, well, what are the powers associated with light? Lightning, sunlight, heat, power, strength, life. What are the powers associated with life? Again, life, growth, strength, and, you know, other such things. But, ultimately... Oh, hey, accidental backstab. Fantastic. But what are the powers that are associated with darkness? The powers of darkness are not necessarily evil, because dark isn't inherently evil. The powers of darkness are to hide to rest and soothe. A safe place, where things aren't too bright. 
where you can avoid threats. You hide in the darkness. So, having taken these powers, the others all set about building their realms, setting themselves up as, as great powers. But the Furtive Pygmy just disappears. The Furtive Pygmy disappears, and the only people are there for that first people, of whom the Furtive Pygmy must have been one. Later on, a second people emerges. Humanity. Oh, look, here's our friend, uh, Siegmeier of Katarina. I do love how muffled his voice is. It's a fantastic little touch. Yep. Nah, I kill him. There's a faker vanguard like you and I. I'll think of something. We can overcome this together. Uh, yeah, so basically he's stuck. This is quite a fix. We'll need another three. No, maybe five volumes. Hmm, quite a fix indeed. Yeah, we're actually fine. Um, basically there's a couple of silver knights on the other side of this door and you can't fight them alone. But I can lure them in one by one and take care of them pretty easily. So, yeah. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, so you have... <laughs> you have, um... These three divinities setting themselves up in their various ways. I'm going to lure him over here so that I don't accidentally hit, um... Old friendly Onion Nighty guy. Oh, how did that miss? So... Ultimately, well, I suppose ultimately is entirely the wrong way to use at the moment. Ah, oh, fuck, I cannot remember what I was talking about. The, uh... The Furtive Pygmy disappeared, so while the Witch of Isolith and Nito were oppositional, and that limited their power, the, um... There was no opposition to Gwyn, because the, the Furtive Pygmy disappeared. There's no opposition, so he has is free to set himself up as the greatest deity. And indeed, Nito is a singular deity who has a singular um, sphere, which is of little relevance to the gods, and really no one no one but him cares about, you know? He's very much a um, very much a Hades figure. He's got his job to do, and he's going to do his job, and that's what he really cares about. So, I, uh... And, of course, the Witch of Isolith, you know, is... You know, her power is limited by the fact that she has this oppositional force. Gwyn, as I've been saying, is not limited in these ways. So Gwyn gets to build an Orlando, take over as essentially the chief god of the entire world. And um, this could be considered a very shrewd move on the part of the Furtive Pygmy, because instead of building himself this grand world of giants and gods and heroes, the Furtive Pygmy's children are humanity. Because, you know, what's a human to a giant? A tiny person, a pygmy. So, the Furtive Pygmy's move is very shrewd. He knows he can't fight alone, so he goes away and everyone forgets about him. And then, eventually, humanity come along. He releases them into the world, and humans run around doing the human thing. But of course, Gwyn's had a very long time to set himself up, so Gwyn becomes the god. Gwyn's people become the god of humanity. Not in a literal um, sense, in the way that Gwyn is the god of sunlight, but in a, in a more figurative sense, because Gwyn has decided to take up that role. Incidentally, this is a piece of concept art um, illustrating that originally the brass sentinels of Anor Londo were supposed to be about three times the size they are in the game currently, or twice the size, maybe. And uh, it's interesting, because the fact that that actually has a presence in the game implies that Therefore, they must once have been bigger, and perhaps their smaller size is to the due to the waning of Anor Londo. Uh, yeah, so 
Time to go tell all onions the good news. Whoops, this didn't mean to skip that. I'm saved! This night of Catalina hereby commend you. Take this as a token of my gratitude. But be warned. Gallantry entails great risk. Next time, give me a chance to come up with a You plan. had plenty of time, mate. Do you have anything else to say? But be warned. Nope. Next time. Oh, hey, a message. Saint Ed. <laughs> yeah, people like uh, people like him quite a lot, as do I. Um. So yeah, I'm running low on Estus, so I'm gonna go um, heal up and then catch up with you guys again tomorrow, where I will probably continue talking about this weird oppositional thingamajiggy. Bye then. <laughs>